Right, so uh, we, we looked at get. There's conversely, there's assos, which is sort of the opposite of get, where you associate a value into a collection. And so let's do that. Let's take that thing and associate the first value with three instead. You get three back, right? Uh, now, the thing to remember here is that this doesn't mutate anything. If I do this, let my vec one, and I grab, uh, I just put one, two, my vec two, assos my vec. And associate the first element with three. Uh, this will create a, a copy of the first vector with the property changed. The first vector remains one two. The second vector has to has to change in it. And this is true for everything. You never actually modify something in place in Clojure. And these data structures are mute are immutable. You cannot do it. Um, so everything returns a new copy where with the modifications on top of it. And this can work because it's very efficient. The, these data structures sort of optimized for that use case. So there's a lot of structural sharing going on be, be behind the covers that sort of share data. I mean, in this case, it doesn't share anything because it's a two element vector. But if you have a really large thing, you can effectively go into uh, a like 100,000 element vector and just associate a different value in it. And it will actually not do a copy of that data. It will just sort of, basically it is, it's implemented as a, as a tree that every, where every node is sort of like, is, is a flat, vec, flat array that has a certain size that is optimized to, to fit in system caches. And when you modify one such thing, it sort of walks that tree structure and just sort of replaces the path from the top to the bottom of the tree to the, to the node with uh, the new vector. So you're, you're, you're not copying the entire thing. You're copying like a few nodes in, in, in such a large data structure. And because the branching factor is huge, because you have like 32 elements in every single one, uh, you're not actually doing much. I mean, you, you, in a really huge thing, you're maybe copying five nodes. Uh, so, so, so it's very efficient to, to, to mutate stuff like this. Um, right, so that's there. You, you can associate values like that. Associate actually lets you do multiple things. It, it first, first of all, it works on, on maps as well. So let's grab this bit from here. And I'm going to associate my map, associate the value C with 3. You can see I get that. But you can keep going. So you can do like C3, D4, and maybe I will replace A as well. So A should be 0 just to mess things up. Uh, so you can see I can sort of list a bunch of associations in one go there and, and change something. Uh, there's a converse function to Asos, which is called disos, which removes stuff. So, and it doesn't take any key, uh, any values, of course, because it just removes values from a map. So, if I remove a from that map, I will get a, a map back that just contains the b. If I remove something that's not there, like d, uh, sorry about the indentation. If I remove d, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't crash. It doesn't do anything. It just sort of like, oh, you want this thing without that? That's fine. Uh, and one thing to note with the, all of these functions that we talked about, the get, the assos, and disos, is that they accept nil as an argument. And they don't, they don't blow up if you do that. They're just like, OK, you're giving, giving me nil. You get nil back. Um, if I associate nil with a value, I get a map back. So nil is effectively the same thing as an empty collection that's not really properly typed to anything, which means that you don't really worry about nil as much in Clojure as you do in, in Java. In Java, it's like if there's null, you're like, ah, it's, you, know, you can't return null. That's, you, you're never supposed to do that. Um, but here, it's, it's more like it's treated interchangeably with an empty collection. So it's, it's not something that you worry so much about. You don't get uh, nearly as much runtime errors from this as, as you would expect. Um, 
you can actually use these things nested as well. So there's, there's get and asos, right? But there's also a converse function for get called get in. Yeah. So, so there's get in. Uh, oh, that didn't really help. And get in takes a structure like this that might be nested, right? You might have another map in here. So that's B1, I don't know, and B2. So you can see you have A, uh, and B is pointing to another map, and B has B1 and B2 in it. And I can actually access stuff in this map directly by addressing it using a path. So I can go to B and B2. And I will get the value at B2 here, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. So you can do a long path like this. And if there's a, if there's a vector in here instead, um, B, B2, and there's a vector, I can just keep on indexing that with uh, an index in the path. So I can dig into a, a collection this way really nicely and extract, extract something that's at a path. And there's a um, corresponding associ in where I would associate the value at B, B2, 2, and sorry, so that's the thing at element. That's the three there. I'm mean, going to replace that with 33. And we get the entire map back that has that change committed to it. Uh, same thing here is that everything sort of just um, returns new values. And we'll do like a structural sh sharing thing to, to get that back. Um, yeah, I think that's um, maybe a good point to, to end this time. There's, uh, we're going to be talking about some additional things in another session. We're going to talk about functional programming, what it means, and how you would do some kind of sophisticated data transformations and maybe create your own, um, how, how, how you can work with those abstractions. And uh, we are eventually going to reach a point where we do try to solve a real problem and, and, and work in a real application and see like how do we, uh, how do, would you write, how would you approach solving a problem using a functional programming language? Uh, because you don't have mutation in the same way. I mean, nothing as we've done so far has actually done mutation except when we're dealing with Java. Uh, 